All right, uh, we are now in um, ZBrush. This is where uh, all of the boring stuff that we have uh, gone through in um, the previous five lessons finally comes together and we get to have some fun. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go up to the Import uh, button under our Tool menu and uh, we're going to look for our OBJ that we saved out from Maya and you will find that in the data folder of our project folder um, under projects under our Maya main directory. Now the way that um, ZBrush brings in OBJs it saves them as a tool or it um, imports them as tools which means that we can drag out copies of them onto our canvas. So we'll just drag out a copy now and you may notice that uh, nothing seems to be happening. Um, it looks like um, we have a, a dud tool that it, that it um, hasn't placed anything on the canvas but if we go up to the edit um, object uh, button uh, or we press the T key and we then click and drag somewhere in blank space or on the outside of this rectangle here we can rotate this object around and we can see that we actually did bring in an object it's just that it was invisible from that side because uh, the normals uh, of our polygon faces are facing in the wrong direction so the way that we fix that is we go to display properties and we press flip and that flips the normals now if we wanted to we could use double-sided polygons um, I prefer not to use double-sided polygons uh, because without them um, activated uh, I can tell which is the front face of my polygons and it also means that we don't affect the uh, the back faces um, and also uh, double-sided polygons um, add to the uh, to the memory and uh, processor um, uh, load that we have in a scene. It basically doubles the number of polygons that we're rendering. So um, here we are, we have our object in scene. I'll just um, hold down the shift key and drag in uh, empty space just to sort of line it up with one of the um, one of the axes of the, uh, uh, of the world. Um, you may notice that when we sort of when we rotate this object it looks a bit strange, it almost looks like it flares out as it gets further away from the camera. Um, as a matter of fact, um, what's actually happening is that um, this side of the object is the same size as this side of the object because this is like um, an isometric view. It isn't actually a perspective um, view. So if we want to turn on perspective we can just tap the P key and there we go, we now have an object which is behaving in the way that we expect uh, an object to behave um, in real space. So, um, the first thing I'm going to do is, um, well, before, before, I, um, before I change this geometry in any way, I'm going to come down to Morph Target and Store MT or Store Morph Target. This will come in handy um, later on. It's, a, it's actually a very important step and um, I recommend you get into the habit of when you bring in an object for manipulation like this that you always store a morph target as uh, probably the first thing that you do. Um, okay, so with the morph target stored what I want to do is I want to um, crease these edges. The reason for this is that if I go to geometry and I divide the object um, you'll see that uh, it smooths out all of our edges here. Um, it looks fine but um, as a matter of fact uh, we actually want to keep these sorts of flat um, faces around the edges of our objects because we want those to butt up against uh, one another in the um, UDK so that when it uh, snaps to the grid it um, uh, the edges line up and um, and uh, if we 
uh, have the, these outer edges rounded any, in any way, it will throw off our normal map for the faces that are actually showing um, in the game engine. So it's best to have those as flat as possible. So as you saw before, if we divide um, and these edges aren't creased, um, then uh, they will be rounded and it will, um, it will uh, interfere with our normal map. Um, now there is uh, a couple of ways to uh, set up creases, but what I like to do, I'll just switch off perspective, just roll it down a little bit there, now I'll switch on the uh, polyframe um, mode, and this will actually show us the um, the lines or the outlines of each polygon, and this can make it a little bit easier to work with, um, depending on the operation that you're that you're performing. So, what I want to do is select this interior f um, set of faces, these curved this curved surface here, and so what I'm going to do is hold Control and Shift. And I'm going to drag a box out. I'm going to release shift. And if you um, if you read the uh, lettering at the top, it says shift unpressed, hide inside selection. And that's what we want. And so we've we've hidden that um, that selection there. Um, now I also want these faces here. Unfortunately, I can't select these uh, these faces properly um, in the first. Um, dragging out of the box, but if we do the same thing again, the um, the program realizes that we actually do want to select those polygons, and it allows us to hide those. And you can see that we have now um, hidden out the curved section, which is kind of the opposite of um, what we um, what we wanted, but um, that's uh, actually a good thing because now we can. Um, Hold down Control and Shift again, and we'll click and we'll click the mouse um, somewhere on the object, and that will reverse our selection. And so now we have um, that uh, curved surface um, shown, and the rest of it hidden. Now, to save time later on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to Poly Groups, and I'm going to say Group Visible, and you'll notice that it changed color. That's because we have the frame on. If we take frame off. Um, it will be the same color. Uh, we can turn frame back on. And if we um, hold down Control and Shift and click in space, uh, we can bring back the, uh, the rest of the object. And you can see that we now have uh, two groups um, which are differentiated by this, um, this color difference here. So now I just want to um, select the top, bottom, left and right sides and do the same thing. And um, knowing that it doesn't select uh, the, the um, polygons that are partially contained within uh, first, uh, we can just draw a better selection box. Uh, we can um, select these edges in this way. And um, once we have those selected as visible, we can group visible. The color change was quite subtle there, but it was um, it was actually um, it has actually grouped those. At least I think it has. Yes, it seems to have. Um, yep, yeah, it's grouped those. So um, now I'm going to drag selection around these guys and group visible. drag a selection um, partially containing these guys, so it knows that um, all of the polygons that we have within it are partially within it, and so it knows that every polygon that's partially within it, that's a really confusing way of saying it, but y you'll get the hang of how these selections work, so we can hide that, and group visible, and hide those ones, and group visible. And there we go, we have our groups set up and ready to go.